Hi everyone, I'm Lorraine Driscoll and this is another episode of Building Better Brains where each week I talk about the root causes of why your child might be struggling with learning, reading, and behavior and what are some solutions that reach way beyond the limitations of IEPs, medication, and endless tutoring. Today I want to talk about um, let's just call it genetics and one particular topic related to genetics that comes up all the time and is a bit of a hot topic and one that evokes a lot of controversy and that is what is uh, incorrectly called the um, autism or ADHD gene or dyslexia sometimes dyslexia gene but more so the autism and ADHD gene and uh, I really want to talk about that because the whole topic of genetics um, can really ruffle my feathers because we tend to sometimes hear this is genetic or that is genetic and have a really powerless attitude. And for me, um, as a holistic nutritionist and someone who has overcome uh, all kinds of different physical and mental health issues, I know that genetics is only a piece of the puzzle and that genetics does not mean that your health destiny is etched in stone. So I want to explain how we can kind of overcome that sense of powerlessness and why, and also debunking some of the myths surrounding the MTHFR gene. So the MTHFR gene is a hot topic um, among autism spectrum uh, communities. And that is because 98% of autism spectrum individuals carry the MTHFR gene mutation. Sorry, I should say the gene mutation, not the gene. Um, so it's, gets very, it's very easy when you hear that stat to jump on the bandwagon that it's genetic and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, however, what we are not talking about is that 35 to 50 percent of the population actually carries the mutated F MTHFR gene. And as you know, 35 to 50 percent of the population is not autistic. Uh, so then what is the connection? with the MTHFR gene mutation and why does 98% of autistic individuals then carry that gene mutation? How does that all kind of go together? Um, and so basically it's not a gene, it's not an autism gene or an ADHD gene. What I call this gene is the canary in the coal mine gene. And uh, that basically means that these individuals are particularly sensitive to environmental toxicity. And I'm not just talking about toxicity in terms of of course, I definitely the chemicals, pesticides, um, heavy metals, all that kind of stuff is huge, 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 huge piece of the puzzle. But just creating imbalances, imbalances with us using, um, you know, life saving antibiotics. I'm not saying we should be using antibiotics. Um, you know, definitely there's an overuse, but they're sensitive when we start altering the gut to bacteria. Sensitivity to, you know, all of these um, electromagnetic frequencies with these 5G towers and Wi-Fi and all that type of stuff. So they're just sensitive to change in the environment, particularly changes to the environment in which we evolved in for thousands of years, which has been altered so much in the last several decades, um, has been altered more than any other time in history. So what is the MTHFR? It is a gene, it is both a gene and an enzyme and they work together. And what happens is the gene provides instructions to the body on how to make the enzyme. And the enzyme, the MTHFR enzyme, is critical for countless biochemical functions in the body. Uh, the enzyme is what converts folate, the vitamin B9, into methylfolate. And you might be wondering, okay, why is that important? Well, it's hugely important. Um, methylfolate is what is, is absolutely essential for the methylation cycle. Uh, and the methylation cycle is just imperative for so many functions in the body. So if there is a mu mutation and that conversion uh, does not happen where folate is converted into methylfolate, then the biochemical process of methylation can happen. And what does this mean? This basically means that the body is prevented from doing all of these biochemical processes that is optimal for both mental and physical health. And just to touch on some of the factors that methylation can influence, or not can, but with, definitely influences to varying degrees, depending on environment, depending on 
how many copies of that genetic mutation that an individual has. Um, so methylation influences gene expression. So that's if a gene's going to be turned off or on. It influences brain development and brain chemistry. So you've probably heard of spina bifida and that is directly connected to the MTHFR gene mutation. Spina bifida is where there's an incomplete um, development of the spinal cord and the brain and so forth. And there's other complications. I'm not gonna get into all of that. And we are told to take folic acid, which I'm not gonna to touch on right yet today, but that's a whole other um, issue. Uh, let's just say for now, you don't need folic acid, you need folate. Um, and so the other aspect in terms of brain development and brain chemistry is that methylfolate is what builds key neurotransmitters in the brain that is necessary for things like focus, concentration, memory, and mood. And so if those neurotransmitters can't be effectively built or insufficiently created because of the breakdown in the methylation process, then you're going to have all kinds of different cognitive mental health issues as well as physical health issues. Uh, methylation in, um, kind of inadvertently affects detoxification. Um, so it involves the production of the most, uh, most powerful antioxidant known as known, um, and it's called glutathione. And um, also methylation affects things like creation and repair of DNA, of RNA, creating immune cells, regulating the immune system, um, reducing histamine in the body and regulating the immune response as well as managing stress hormones and um, impaired methylation can activate the fight or flight mechanism, which therefore will increase the production of stress hormones. And this can present as behavior issues like aggression, anxiety, irritability, moodiness, and all that type of stuff that we typically see in kids with autism, ADHD, ODD, and dyslexia, even because so many dyslexic kids have other um, behavior issues and so forth that they're struggling with as well. Um, also methylation helps to reduce inflammation in the body. Inflammation is kind of the core problem underlying issue with every single illness, whether it's heart disease, cancer, uh, even, you know, clinical depression and so forth. So what is the connection between ADHD and the MTHFR gene? Well, the connection is that methylfolate, as you know, is needed to make neurotransmitters. And two of those neurotransmitters that methylfolate helps to make, for example, is dopamine and serotonin. And as any parent knows who has a child who has ADHD, there's a huge link between dysfunction with children who have ADHD and the production of serotonin and dopamine. MT, the MTHFR uh, mutation and methylation also affect things like memory and cognitive processing. And that is why there is such a high risk or incidence of learning disabilities and dyslexia and autism, which is obviously difficulties with, you know, having impaired learning abilities um, whenever there is a mutation in that gene. So bottom line is the uh, trouble starts when there is a mutation in the gene and impairs the body's ability to convert folate or folic acid into methylfolate. So methylfolate is the form that is needed by the body for these biochemical processes and methylation. So if there is a mutation, that conversion doesn't happen. It can be reduced by 40 to 70%, depending on various factors like toxicity, as well as the amount of copies of a gene that that person has. So this means that detoxification can be impaired by the same percentage. So for example, I have um, two copies from each parent. Sorry, like I have one copy from my mom and one copy from my dad of this mutated gene. And I don't have autism, I never have had autism. My husband has a copy of the MTHFR. My daughter has two copies of the MTHFR. Um, and so as you can see, it doesn't mean that you're going to become autistic or have any of these other health issues or mental or cognitive issues if um, that gene is mutated. However, it does state that my daughter, for example, has a 50% reduced ability to detoxify because she got um, a copy from myself and a copy from my husband. And so um, detoxification is huge in a really, really toxic environment. 
and low activity basically in that mutated gene of the MTHFR help or creates higher levels of something called homocysteine and this significantly then increases the risk of all kinds of stuff from elevating inflammation, uh, birth defects, autoimmune conditions, heart disease, even uh, diabetes, all kinds of stuff. So basically you do not want high homocysteine and when that happens that affects glutathione which is that master antioxidant and is necessary to, to um, you know produce uh, to have effective detoxification. So while all of this can seem pretty hopeless <laughs> It is not, and um, keep in mind that at a time when environmental toxicity was low, people with the MTHFR gene were generally okay. They were a little more sensitive, maybe have some minor health issues or no health issues at all. It does not mean if you have this mutation that you will. They would just be more sensitive. And I like to think of the MTHFR as a gift and people think I'm crazy when I say that, but I see it as an alarm system that I'm gonna be one of the first people to pick up when something's not right. Um, I'm the person who gets in a car with an air freshener and will start to feel nauseous because air fresheners are like a just toxic waste, you know, a toxic uh, shitstorm of chemicals. And I'm inhaling that and my body's going, no, I don't want to have to deal with this. So nobody should be inhaling that. And I'm going to be more sensitive to that, as is my daughter, who like one day somebody got in the car and was wearing perfume, like your run of the mill perfume from like the Sears counter. And she got really, really sick. So there is quite a bit that you can do to not only dial down and support detoxification, to dial down the effects of the MTHFR gene, but to even help support the process so that methylation does uh, improve in the body so that it's not such a problem. And you don't, you're not, your fate is not etched out or carved out because of being your carrier of these genes. Um, so in my next, this is, there is quite a bit, so I'm going to be talking more about this next week about what are the signs that your child might be, um, might carry the MTHFR gene mutation, um, and what you need to know about folic acid and folate, and, uh, and then we'll, I'll also be talking in future weeks about detoxification and how to support your child's health and your own health if you suspect or maybe you know through genetic testing that you carry the MTHFR gene. So if you'd like to learn more about how you can optimize your child's brain and body health regardless of their genetics, um, so they can overcome everything from reading, learning, and behavioral difficulties and be happier, healthier kids, hop on my website, take the free quiz, uh, and learn more about what could be some of the root causes of why your child is struggling. And feel free to set up a free 20 minute consult uh, to learn more about my programs and uh, how I can help. Thanks for listening.